Okay, so yeah, so kahagabi I set up the no, <laughs> pipeline the design. So let's look at the GTK wave. Just to illustrate the idea of pipelining, how it executes uh, in the by in the implementation that we're using. So I just implement. Uh, I just uh, run the uh, data from encoded the data from the textbook. And uh, for you to be able to see how the uh, pipelining is actually uh, uh, implemented in this example. So in the pipelining, we have different stages. So you have uh, the different components. And you see here the different uh, parts. So I just ko it para we traverse natin later. Okay? Uh, So this is how uh, the code looks like when implemented in uh, Verilog. Okay? So again, in your lab, you're implementing VHDL. Maybe you might be interested to port this into VHDL if you have some free time. Okay? But this is how the code is implemented. Okay? So you have the different components and the pipe, uh, pipeline registers actually are implemented as a form of caches. Okay? So example, this one here, uh, this is the IFID vertical bar. Okay? This one, instruction fetch, instruction decode, pipeline register, uh, instruction decode, uh, execute pipeline register. So you have here the different inputs and the different outputs. Okay? And then uh, yeah, the rest of the different stages in the uh, pipeline so all our places so sabi natin when we implement the pipelining kailangan natin mag maglagay ng uh, parang registers kumbaga boundary registers in order to be able to save yung mga data na nanggaling sa previous stage kasi sa pipelining sisingitan mo siya na yeah, you're going to insert or execute a new instruction okay so the data should be preserved and the, or the, the way to do that is to put in boundary pipeline registers. And that is the purpose of this code. Okay? And uh, so the memory and the right back, the last part. Okay? So uh, in the book, so this is the instruction uh, that was, I don't know if this is in the slide. Let's take a look at the example. LDUR LDUR X10 port. Okay, so this is the this is the code that I uh, placed in the simulation. simulation. So LDUR sub 11. So LDUR X10. Okay. Sub 11 add uh, X12. X so ito yun. Okay. So let's see how this so uh, in the diagram okay, we can look in two ways in the pipeline design we can look at it in this traditional form okay so you have the clock cycles and then you have the uh, this is the multi cycle one and this one is the single cycle wherein you show the, date, the entire data path and uh, what are the instructions that are executing at the different stages right so this is the implementation of the pipeline with the five stages so how is this implemented or how, how can we view this uh, in uh, in the implementation okay. so this is how it's done okay. so uh, let's start with uh, so let's place the marker here okay. so during the clock cycle one so uh, okay, so initially the states are does not have uh, values yet, okay? So we need to a stage not all, okay? So this is the time, time, timeline, okay? Um, 
This is the clock. Okay. So the first instruction to be executed, okay, at this clock cycle. So itong itong this one, this block is called the clock cycle. Okay. The instruction to be executed is F eight four two eight zero two A. Okay. So we have uh, F eight four two eight zero two A. So that's the LDUR instruction. So pagdating sa clock cycle one, okay. Pagdating sa clock cycle one, okay. What will happen is, uh, of course, the program counter will now be zero kasi ito yung nakalagay dito sa ating uh, instruction. Okay. Uh, and then, this will be the instruction uh, this will be the uh, we're looking at this na ito, kumbaga nasa clock cycle one tayo, nandito yung instruction na yun, nandito pala. Okay. Ibig sabihin, yung program counter niya Zero zero pa, okay. Tapos yung instruction memory niya, yun yung LD one. So kung ito pa sa first clock cycle, okay. Yung ibig sabihin natin dito sa diagram nato, okay. So when we move this, uh, when we move this across the line, okay. Okay, nakita niyo yung transition, okay. Nakita niyo yung transition na yan, okay. So when this uh, transition happens. This is the instruction fed, instruction decode. Ang implementing ang, ang reference niyan ay cache, pero nilabel ko na lang dito na instruction fed, instruction decode. So ibig sabihin, yung kalahati ng clock cycle na yun, so ito yung laman doon, di ba? So, this is the instruction memory. Okay? So, yung next, yung kalahati ng clock cycle na yun, isipulat na yan dito sa instruction register, sa IFID na pipeline register. Nakita niya yung nakita niya yung lumipat na siya. So, we should be hen itong IFID na component na to, pumasok na sa input yung ano, sa input niya yung instruction. Okay? Baguhin natin to. Para malinis. Okay? So, yung instruction and then mag-move tayo dito. This is clock cycle 2. Okay, nakita niyo yung nakita niyo yung trans, transformation, no? Nakita niyo ba? So at last cycle 2, the instruction memory iba na yung laman niya. Right? Because we are now executing based on our code CB03004B which is sub 11x to x3. Okay, get the idea? So we are now so sa diagram natin at clock cycle 2 Nandito na ngayon siya, no? nandito na ngayon yung LVUR, dito na ngayon yung SUB X11, X2, X3. Okay? So, makikita yung idea. Okay? So, we are, ang, ang, ang ino-observe natin dito is yung flow ng LVUR instruction. So, remember, the code is uh, LVUR. So, ibig sabihin, kung ano yung value ni register X1, i-add ng offset na 40, kung ano yung value ng memory na yon ilalagay sa register X10. Ayun yung ibig sabihin nun. Okay? So, this is, we are now in clock cycle 2. Okay? So, dapat uh, sa clock cycle 2, uh, okay? nandito na yung uh, yung program counter natin na update na dapat. Okay? Okay? So, 4 na siya dito. Okay? So, if we move here, Okay. So aangat na ngayon yung aangat na ngayon yung sa uh, yung LDUR dito sa part na to. Okay? So pagdating dito, notice na this is the register file, okay? So ano yung mga inputs sa register file? Register read, uh, read register 2, write register and then output. So currently yung LDUR nandito na. So notice na Yung 1, yung data 1, that will pertain to register 1, right? Do you agree? Register 1. And yung A, yun yung register, ano? Register 10. Diba? Sa decimal. Sa decimal. Okay. So, yan yung papasok dyan. And then, da, nandito, nandito na ngayon yung LDUR, instruction. Okay. Ito, iba, hindi ito, 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 ito instruction na to, LDUR, nandito siya sa clock cycle 2. And you see that in the, 
uh, same manner so pagdating dito bago na uli yung ano bago na uli yung uh, instruction pointer as lulusot na dito sa third stage yung ano yung uh, yung sub instruction and then nandito na ngayon yung pag-process nung uh, LDUR okay so you should be able to see that here okay so yung 40 ito na yung uh, memory lo uh, memory location to 28 dapat yon okay and you get the idea okay so i hope na sa lab uh, try na yung itry nyo to okay? try nyo ba sa lab in the last Friday in so I, su I suggest na itry nyo to para makita visualize yun ano yung ano, kung ano yung uh, kung paano gumagana okay? mas maganda yun isa titingin-tingin tayo dito okay? so this is just an illustration and uh, uh, just to illustrate how uh, this design that we are doing here is actually implemented in the particular language, right? So, let's continue our discussion on uh, hazards, right? Hazards, right? So, what we're doing is, uh, we're looking into, okay, we have pipelining. However, depending on the sequence of instructions, we may not, we may not be able to take advantage of uh, pipelining the kumbaga yung pinaka efficient na pipe pipelining because of certain hazards and this one is an example of that okay? it's called a data hazard in ALU instructions so what we what we what we are seeing here is that we have this instruction subtract and then the result is placed in register x2 okay? however uh, and then the next instruction is n okay? however when we try to draw this okay, visually, you will see that there will be uh, some data hazards. Okay? So, for example, uh, at this point, okay, in clock cycle 1, clock cycle 1, okay, so, uh, the usual, okay, the usual process, so, fetch, uh, fetch uh, this is uh, instruction fetch, instruction decode, execute, okay, memory and write back. Okay. So, yung second instruction, hindi ka pa pwedeng uh, mag-execute okay? kasi yung output ng subtract ay sa dulo pa makikita. Okay? So, you have to uh, wait a while and one solution to that is via what you call forwarding. Okay? Wherein you don't wait for the entire pipeline to finish but rather, pag available na yung result, okay? forward mo siya sa uh, for example in this case the execute part the execute stage of the uh, the end instruction okay so that's uh, one solution and how do we detect okay the need to forward so ang ginagawa diyan uh, pag lang ay program mo siya sa very lag okay and you would like to implement some uh, detection of uh, uh, hazards okay you need to specify some uh, parameters and basically by passing registers okay, uh, along the pipeline. So, mapansin nyo dito, okay, in order to be able to do forwarding, kailangan yung data ay manggagaling dun sa pipeline register. Okay? So, you, as you can see here, okay, so at this point, dumaan na yung instruction ng sub sa AL execute available na yung ano available na yung data yung yung difference okay kaso hihintayin mo pa siya dito okay and kailangan mo siya para may input dito okay so what you do is to uh, provide names on the register in the values in the registers and then you can use that to determine uh, when to forward or when hazard is uh, detected Okay. So, manggagaling yan doon sa pipeline register. Okay? So, so for example, okay? So, in this example you have IDEX, okay? So, you have uh, you have to specify the register number, okay? Kung saan siya manggagaling. Okay? And then you have uh, for example, for the ALU, okay? So, limbawa, ito yung uh, input, 
Okay? For, from the instruction decode, execute register, pipeline register, ito yung output niya. Okay? Specific register doon sa pipeline register na yun. And ito naman ay para sa second register na ginagamit niya. And you can use a condition okay, to determine whether a uh, data hazard is present. Okay? And there are two classes of uh, data hazard as, as can be shown here. Okay? So you have 1A and 1, uh, one and 2. And it depends on the uh, values of the uh, registers. Okay? So, ito ay, ano, so this one is execute tapos uh, memory na pipeline register tapos meron siyang specific na uh, register number which actually the destination register. Okay? Tapos ito naman, uh, nandun siya sa instruction decode tapos execute na pipeline register tapos ito yung register. Pag equal sila, okay, then you can uh, say that there is a data hazard for that. Okay? And this is the solution. You can forward from XBEM pipeline register. Okay? So, how is the, uh, for example, uh, ito, yung example uh, yung, ito yung X2. Okay? So, X2 here okay, is equivalent to this value. Okay? Or is equivalent to this condition. Okay? Kaya, yung register RD, which is X2, okay, execute mem, X2 yan, tapos ito naman, X2 din yung input nung kabila. Okay? Yung next instruction. Okay? So, that's... So, what you do is to forward that. Okay? So... You can only forward if uh, you are writing to the register. Okay? Because, ang focus natin dito is uh, implementing forwarding at the execution stage. Okay? So, ito yung pinaka-common, okay? And to design that, okay? So, ito yung condition natin para malaman natin kung merong data hazard and then this is the action that we have to take. We have to forward, okay? And this will be the design for that. Okay? So, para mas malina, okay? So, when you have a forwarding unit, okay? So, sabi natin, you have to name, you have to name the registers that are coming out both the pipeline registers. Okay. So remember, uh, meron tayong uh, last time na discuss na yung output dito, kailangan to propagate hanggang doon sa memory right path. Okay. So we have to introduce a forwarding unit. Yung forwarding unit is nothing more than a control unit that will determine kung saan ito forward yung result mo. Yung idea. So, yung instruction natin ay, ano, uh, our instruction is subtract. So, try to hindi na natin. X1 minus X3, dalagay sa X2. Right? So, in order to uh, support forwarding, right? so, kailangan mong ma-determine at this point pa lang, sabi natin, pwede mo na makuha yung result na X, B, X2. Right? At this point. Hindi mo na kailangan hintayin pa dun sa right pa para makuha mo yung value na X2. Right? So, what you can do is, you can uh, put a line here. Okay. Uh, uh, put a line here. Okay. And then, kung may result na siya, kung may result niya, you can uh, use that as input. Okay. And then, this will be uh, just, this will decide. Kung palulusutin niya ba dito, palulusutin niya ba dito. Okay. You get the idea? So, the idea of forwarding is, uh, the forwarding unit should be placed near the execute stage. Now, how can you be in concept? So, ito ay parang ano lang to, parang uh, uh, decoder. Okay, it's a decoder. And these are the conditions that we're going to determine. Kasi, okay, uh, pag pinorward mo siya, kailangan mong mamili dito ng input, okay? Uh, this is the ALU. For example, uh, you have to do an N. Okay? So you have to do an N. Okay? So the N would require the ALU. And all you have to do is to decide kung saan magagaling yung input. So, kung yung uh, soon ay tapos na, nandito na sa stage na to, available na to, you can use this forward unit depende sa heat pattern niya. Okay, kung ano yung palusutin mo dito sa multiplexer na to na gagamitin dito sa execute space. 
get the idea. Okay, so these are the conditions, okay? So um, yung forward A na uh, two bits I zero zero, okay? So the first ALU operand comes from the register file. Pag one zero, the first ALU operand is forwarded from the prior ALU result. Okay, mga galing sa AXMM. Okay, so okay, so ito yung ito yung lulusot don. Okay. And then, uh, pag, uh, forward A naman ay 0, 1. So, mem write back, the first ALU operand is forwarded from the data memory to an er uh, or an earlier ALU result. So, you get the idea of uh, uh, forwarding. So, sa ano naman, sa pangalawa naman, okay? So, pag zero, yung forward B na, na, beat, na, beat, okay? na beats, 2 beats, pag 0, 0, okay? The second ALU operand comes from the register file. So you have the, the ALU has two operands, right? So basically, you just have to select kung saan manggagaling yung operand na yon. And to do that, that will depend on the uh, value dun sa forwarding unit. You get the idea? So mamimili lang siya kung saan niya kukunin yung palulusutin niya para sa ALU. With forwarding, okay, uh, yun, may mga options na ngayon siya. Kasi kanina, wala to. Okay? These are not available. Okay? So this is basically the simplest, uh, the simplest explanation of this. Okay, uh, double data hazard. Uh, ito naman uh, when adding vectors. Okay, so the kasunod na add. Okay, so wakaron ka ng dalawang data hazard. So what you do is to revise the memory hazard condition uh, only forward if the execute has uh, ex execute hazard condition is empty. Okay. Uh, so this is the this is the condition for forwarding. Okay. So the first one is to detect the hazard and then it depends on the hazard. Okay. So set mo yung value of uh, forwarding. So naman, pangalawa, forward. Basically programming. Okay. Nasundan nyo ba yung, 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 ano, yung uh, uh, idea? Just to visualize how or somehow represent kung paano gagawin yung forward. Okay, so this is the complete, hindi uh, naman complete, may mga missing pa rin dito. But this has the, uh, uh, most of the components that are relevant to uh, forwarding in the data path. Okay, so again, Napansin nyo, when designing a processor, it depends on your need and uh, basically kung ano yung gusto mong ma-achieve ng processor. Nadami yung components mo and it's very difficult to, uh, kung mga masyadong malaki, mahirap talaga i-comprehend yung entire process. Right? So, nang ngayon yung ALU natin, dati wala yung ganyan, isa lang yung MOOCs ni Dan, pero ngayon kailangan natin ng additional MOOCs para may connection tayo sa forwarding unit ang mag-determine kung saan nung nagaling yung isip niya. So, and then, syempre, kailangan ipasok natin dun sa mga registers yung ano, uh, sa pipeline registers yung mga data. Dito, directly lang natin yung pinu-forward dito sa register file. Pero ngayon, kailangan i-forward na rin natin dito sa kanila. Kasi kailangan natin gamitin yan to check for hazards. Okay? Yeah. And then, of course, you have the control unit. Yeah. So, as you can see, the, our design is getting uh, complicated and even me is uh, kung matagal, dahil ako ma-absorb ma yung, yung, ano, yung uh, design niya, uh, the interconnections. So, the next uh, topic, so this is a typical uh, data hazard. The next one is uh, load use uh, data hazard. Sabi natin, yung load use data hazard, ito yung yung first instruction mo is loading from the memory and then using the data obtained from the memory. Okay, yun yung load use. So, ang mangyayari kasi doon, pag may load use ka, kailangan hintayin mo sa dulo ng memory para makuha mo yung, uh, yung data na gusto mo bago ka makapag-perform ng execute ng next instruction. Ha? Ano yung idea? Okay? So, uh, Check when using instruction is decoded in the instruction decode uh, 
stage. Okay? So, ang ginag- uh, yung notation na to, medyo confusing, but the idea is to simply uh, move, okay? move the, uh, basically to insert a bubble, okay? or mag-stall ka. Okay? So, sa yung discuss natin to before, uh, when the data is not yet available, okay? you try to insert stalls. So, uh, ato yung drawing niya. So, this one here. So, this is an example. Okay? So, you have the load instruction. And sabi natin, uh, yung N, hindi mo siya pwede execute agad. Kasi, ito yung, ito yung memory pa. This is your memory. Dito mo wala na kukuha yung, ano, yung value. Pwede kung dito ka na magsimula, hindi mo nakita yung to. Kasi, uh, bakit? Kasi, dito sa pipeline register na available na yung narinig sa memory eh. You can actually uh, start here. Okay? Kaso, okay, pag ginawa mo to, yung end instruction mo, hindi mo siya available kasi uh, <coughs> mag-e-end ka. Kung mag-e-end ka, kailangan ng ALU. Okay? So, kailangan mo ngayon mag-insert ng bubble and what happens is yung end instruction mo becomes a MOP. Okay? NOP uh, is slow operation. Like, parang uh, wala ito yung perform. Okay? So, you just install, uh, you, you just uh, install at this point. And then, you wait for a while. How many clock cycles? Uh, one clock cycle, saka mo may next. So, you can, ito dapat yan, kaso, since hindi pa available yung data, mag-install ka ng problem. Okay? Paano ba ini-implement yung stall sa ano? The question now is, paano ba ini-implement yung uh, stall sa ano sa uh, sa data path? Okay. Paano mo sabihin na mag-stall ka? Kung ako na compute, okay. paano mo sabihin yun dun sa design mo sa data path mo? Okay. So uh, this is how it's done. You prevent update of the program counter and the instruction fetch ID register. So ibig sabihin para para hindi mag-proceed sa next instruction, di ba? Kasi para na idea is every clock cycle magpo-proceed ka, i-increment mo yung program counter plus 4. Ang gagawin mo ngayon is asabihin mo yung si uh, yung design na wag mong i-update yung program counter. Okay? So prevent update of program counter and the instruction IFID IFID. So di ba ito yung uh, IFID register? magsisend ka ng signal na don't change your values. Okay? So, how is that accomplished? Okay? So, using instruction, uh, uh, instruction is decoded again, uh, following instruction is fetched again, and one cycle stall allows mem to read data for the so LDUR. LDUR, yeah. Okay. So, basically, you just tell the some components. Okay? So, you now have here the hazard detection so, kanina may forwarding tayo, forwarding unit for physical uh, uh, data, uh, data hazard. Ito naman, pag may load use at uh, load use uh, uh, hazard, tapos kailangan na rin mag-stall. Ito yung kailangan natin ito. Okay. Sasabihin natin na, oh, huwag ka muna mag, huwag mo muna i-update yung program counter mo. Huwag mo muna i-update yung type so the rest will, uh, will the rest will continue. Okay. Para pagkatapos ng execution, nagbawi ka rin na yung load, okay. magpuposin na siya. Okay. You get the idea? So ito yung, uh, ito yung lines na to, yung ano, uh, additional lines that will determine. Nakapansin nyo na, nandito yun. Siya yung magdetermine kung i-update ba yung uh, program counter sa yung uh, uh, right dito sa ano okay, sa pipeline register na to okay so stores and performance uh, the big picture stores uh, reduce performance okay so whenever you uh, stall okay you waste some clock cycles okay? but of course you have to make a trade off yung correctness ng correctness ng execution and syempre yung performance so syempre mas maganda yung correct na rin mas maganda yung correct pa rin kahit mabagal yung performance. 
A compiler can arrange the code to avoid hazards and stalls and requires knowledge of the pipeline structure. So, sabi natin, kaya wala na masyadong gumagamit ng assembly for coding from scratch is because the compilers are actually better at reordering uh, instructions in order to uh, take advantage of the hard hardware architecture. Okay? So, yeah. So, basically that's the idea. Okay? So, we'll stop here. Uh, the next topic will be branch hazards. Uh, so, we'll discuss this uh, next, uh, on Friday. Okay? So, see you on Friday.